Greetings everyone, this is Jasmina, and in this video I'm going to talk about part one of the Sanhu watermouth methods. And there are quite a few of them. Now, this method is only concerned with external water and basically rivers. It can have lakes, but it must also have a river, at least one river. Now, like all Sanhu methods, they're slow, but very persistently acting. And like all Sanhu methods, there's no chart for a building. And, in, and like all of them, it's the door facing that matters. That's how you determine what is the facing of your house, by the door facing. That's the main door facing. Now, the external landforms, just in all of feng shui, determine the chi that reaches a building. And for the San He methods, the direction of the landform are measured from the middle of the main door of the building. So this is different than the San Yuan methods. The San Yuan methods use the center of the building. So you have to be clear which method you're using to know which one to use. Now, in general, this isn't going to make a huge difference in most cases because the building, unless it's very, very big, the building is not going to, um, isn't going to have that much of a difference. Now, um, this is just a reminder of all the books and information that I have read um, to understand San He. In this case, I'm going to be talking about a particular chapter in Water, Water Everywhere by uh, this gentleman. And now, these methods that are covered in the Water, Water Everywhere, uh, they are usually use the 12G cycle. Now, not all of them do. There's that simple, there's some simple uh, formations that aren't very precise. Those are also in this Water, Water Everywhere book. But the ones that use the water mouth in particular use the 12G cycle. Now, the 72 dragon uh, red phoenix uh, wood rat method that I already have a video about, that only needed the water mouth and the door facing. In this case, we also need to know the location and the flowing, the flow direction of the incoming water to be able to analyze this properly. So you need to know a bit more. Of the different videos or the different methods in the Water, Water, Everywhere book, this video covers only chapter 2.2. And I will be doing more chapters in the future. And so you will see those. I'm not quite sure when it's going to happen. There's a lot of drawings that I have to do for this. Now, the water mouth location will fix the elemental structure, structure to be used. Now, I do have the video just about the four elemental structures, and that might be worth watching, and you may be able to understand this a bit better, but it might not be absolutely necessary because I will recover it here. So we're using the same locations. Again, this is not, you can't see any water because this is a um, rather dry area. But this is the general close-up location. We have water coming in this direction, and we have another one coming here. And it actually, there's the riverbed. There's a little bridge there, and there's the water mouth where the two meet. Now, as you can see, there is no water here. So at best, this house receives this type of sanhe chi only when the water is actually running. And it does happen. It just doesn't happen very often. And when we're talking about a water mouth, it has to meet certain criteria. Most rivers have water coming in from either direction. So this is a water mouth and this is a water mouth. But this particular house can only use one of these water mouths. It cannot use this one, even though it's closer, 
because it's not embracing it. So the rule is it must be the downstream water uh, mouth that embraces the house. So one side, the other side. It's a, an embracement of sorts. If you had a house here, you could use this water mouth. Now, if this were a, if this bigger, bigger river were a lake or a, or the ocean, this would still be the water mouth. So you don't have to have two water or two rivers meeting. It can be where a river meets a lake or an ocean. Now, in chapter 2.2, this is the rule. One branch of the water, because you're going to have two, it must flow into an ascending sector, past the main door, in the ascending order of one of the 12 chi cycles, because they can go either direction. They can go clockwise or counterclockwise. So with that idea, you need to find out which structure you need to use. And so here is the water mouth location as listed by the signs, the branches. And these are the angles in which they occupy. And then this is the structure you have to use. Now the ascending sectors are growth, bath, youth, officer, prosper, and nurture. And the descending sectors are the weak or weakening, uh, the sick, death, grave, extinct, and conceive. But the order is a little different. You start with growth, bath, youth, and you end with nurture. Even though this is a ascending order, it's at the end of the list. That's just the way it works. Now, these are the four different structures. In the other video, I have them larger, so they're a bit easier to read. But we have a water structure. That's the element where your water mouth is located in this area. If you're, you need to use the wood structure, your water mouth will be located here. If you have a water mouth here, you must use the fire structure. And if you have a water mouth here, you must use the metal structure. In our case, we have to use the metal structure because it's between the yin, the yin water and the rabbit. That's where our water comes in. And you can see it here. Here's the yin water, here's the rabbit. And this is where our water mouth is located in the gen sector. So, we know which structure to use. We must use the metal structure. Now, the these rings, these two inner rings, are the 12 chi cycle. And in the, the innermost ring has growth, bath, youth, going this way. So this one is going counterclockwise. Here's the growth, bath, youth, or that second ring and it's going clockwise. And these are the two chi cycle rings. Now we're gonna look at each one separately so that we can understand this. So this is the one that uses the clockwise direction for the 12 chi cycle. So we have water coming in at growth that meets one good thing. It also passes the front of the door. That's also good. Unfortunately, it is going in the non, it's going backwards. It's not going in the ascending direction. I don't know if you would call it the descending direction, but it's going backwards from what it needs to go. And that is considered disastrous. Now the small river enters at weakening. It does go in the right direction, but it does not go past the front of the house before it hits the water mouth and it doesn't meet the ascending sector. So that it doesn't work for this direction of the 12 chi cycle. But this isn't the only one. We also have the one that's the counterclockwise direction. And we have water coming in from prosperous, which is good. And it's going in the right direction because it's following this direction. It's going in the ascending direction. And it passes the front of the, the door facing. And it leaves 
in a, in a negative sector. So it meets everything. Everything is good about it this way for the bigger river. Now the little river comes in at nurture and it go, but it goes in the opposite direction. So this one doesn't, um, doesn't work, but that's okay. As long as one of them works, it's okay. And if, it's, if you have two rivers and one is much bigger than the other, you would prefer to have the bigger river meet at least one of these. Now it's possible that you can have the condition where neither river functions, but you can't have the condition where both rivers function uh, properly. So it'll either be one or the other or neither. And that's just the way the rules work. Now, if the water had not come in in this prosperous sector, but had come in the weakening or the sick, it could still pass the front of the house, but it would not meet the first requirement of coming in an, in an ascending sector. So it would also fail. But in this case, it happens to come in in, the, in a good sector. But you have to know, you do have to know that sector. So if we are, in our case, we actually have good for the, this water mouth method and good for this 72 dragon uh, red phoenix wood rat method. So they agree. But remember, if we had water coming in one of these two, it would not agree. And this would be bad, and this would be good. And I don't think that can happen in reality, because reality should be independent of which method we use. Now, there are a couple of things to worry about. Uh, the water um, mouth is best located in a non-animal subsector. Um, otherwise, if it is in an animal subsector, it's going to be affected by the Grand Duke whenever the Grand Duke is in that sector. So that's once every 12 years. And But in our case, we happen to meet this requirement. So that's nice. Now, as I said, if the incoming water was in these other two sectors, there, it would be a problem. And neither of the Qi cycle directions would have allowed good Sanhar Qi to be in, in existence. There are some exceptions. You can have water entering a weakening sector if the door facing is also in the weakening sector, which is not the case here. And in the past, or probably they still say this today, it is not good to have water incoming into the bath direction, even though that is an ascending sector. And you do have to remember, Qi, I'm not Qi, Feng Shui is roughly um, 3,000 years old, maybe a bit older. And in ancient times, even just a few hundred years ago, uh, the bath sector was not usually a good part in the life cycle. Bath refers to basically right after you're born to about the age of five. Now, centuries ago, the ability for children to survive that period was fairly low. And it, it was sometime terrible. Now, I don't know how much you know about your family history. I only know a bit about mine, but the one that I know the most about, I was able to find the church records for. And my second great-grandmother, who was born about um, 1800, uh, she had 10 kids, but seven of the 10 died before the age of five. That is like shocking. So it's not too surprising that 
the traditional ones say that you don't want water coming in the bath direction. But if you now live in a developed country, this is a pretty good sector. I mean, it, most children do survive it now, so I don't think it's so important anymore. But you still have to be lucky to even have it come in in the bath sector. So even if we had had the water incoming in one of these two descending sectors, by the analysis of the 72 dragon uh, red phoenix wood rat method, we still would have had good San Her Chi. And the question becomes, will all these methods, because there are many more water methods, what happens when they don't agree? In this case, they do agree. And I'm going to go over comparing all these different methods once I've covered everything. And we're going to see whether or not there's agreement or disagreement with all the different methods for the same location. And it may be that there's disagreements. And I don't think that represents reality very well, but we will have to see. So that's basically it. I'd like to thank you for watching. Please feel free to contact me here if you have any questions or visit my ad free website for more information. And if you subscribe, I do have regular monthly videos about what to do that month and also some new videos on a regular basis. Thank you again for watching.